What's one game from Rare that needs to make a comeback? You let me know in the comments right now while I keep talking. Now, although the company Rare didn't publish any games for the NES, they developed a ton of them. Some of your favorites growing up, platformers, racing games, even some games that were published by LJN were actually developed by Rare. And although I usually rank games by publisher, today we're going to check out every game developed by Rare for the NES. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and make sure you're subscribed because you don't want to miss any future videos coming out. Starting off with a very fun board game called Anticip... Patient. Four players on this if you choose. And although it looks a little bit like Trivial Pursuit, it has kind of a fun gimmick to it where uh, at the earlier levels it has like some dots so you can kind of see in advance where it might go when you connect the dots. Tells you the category and tells you how many letters are in that word. Now later on levels as it gets more difficult it's going to do away with how many letters or what the category is things like that. Once you fill in your four colored squares you move on to the next level and adding the strategy of make sure you get the answer right depending on which square you need to land on next and hopefully you'll get that colored square. Had a lot of fun with anticipation when I was growing up. It's a super cheap NES game. I still love it today. I'm giving this game a B. Well, there's Battletoads. As if it was straight from the comics onto your screen, this game was overly hyped when it first came out, and for all the right reasons. Had some of the best animation I've ever seen on an NES game at the time. The music was fantastic, the art was fantastic. You knew playing this game they had a new mascot on their hands. Like, you already knew that there was going to be other Battletoads games later on, maybe a comic later on, maybe a cartoon later on. They could have gone anywhere with this game. Love the creative bosses as well. Variety of gameplay with this one, love the animation, I gotta give this game an S. It's awesome. And then we get Battletoads Double Dragon, the ultimate team. Although the Double Dragon characters right in here don't let this game fool you, this is a Battletoads game. The Double Dragon guys happen to be in it. It's far more Battletoads than it is Double Dragon for sure. But you can still play as the Double Dragon guys just for fun. Yeah, it's kind of like Battletoads in space on this one. I mean, it's not as much of the charm as Battletoads was. It was still worth playing though. I mean, not a bad find if you find it at a yard sale or something. Battletoads Double Dragon, I would give this game a B. It's good. Ah, uh, it's just missing that charm, I think. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Beetlejuice. Yeah, this game sucks. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's not a fair statement up front, uh, but if you've played it, it's a totally fair statement. Uh, not a lot of direction of where to go, what to do. Your attack is like this barely kick thing. I mean, it just doesn't get the job done at all. Your controls are way too slippery. It was such a letdown because I'm such a big fan of the Beetlejuice movie. Still am today. And the cartoon is excellent, full of dad puns and all that. And you try to make it into an NES game, they could have done so much with this game. They could have done so much with a Beetlejuice game. And they give us this. I'm not sure the direction they were going, to be completely honest with you. Uh, this game is really, really... I mean, this, this game is an F. Yeah. Well, we got Captain Skyhawk from Milton Bradley. This is one of those games you might see for five bucks at a video game convention. Pretty cool looking game too. Nice big graphics, has that isometric layout, although you're just scrolling vertically all the same. Zaxxon style, you can go up, you can go down. There's these hills in the way. If you're too far down, you might crash into them. Sometimes it's almost like you don't see a much of the screen, so sometimes you end up getting shot by a bullet that you didn't even see for a second. Decent game, I guess it's okay. I'll give this game a C. It's, it's worth playing though. Carpet Triangle, super awesome game. So you're a little jet boat and you have a level up system much like a Gradius or a Life Force where you, when you pick up these items, you can decide if you want to go faster, if you want better firepower, if you want missiles, you know, things like that. I love the variety of gameplay as you go through these levels because you don't know what kind of level you're going to get coming up next. Sometimes it's just racing around the corner. Sometimes you have to do little specific uh, tasks in the stages. Every once in a while I might actually find a boss. Yeah, you never know. Huge fan of Cobra Triangle. Love this game a lot. I'd love to see a newer version of this game. That'd be awesome. I'll give this game an A. I love it. The Legend of the Lost City starring Digger T. Rock. Well, Digger T. Rock is one of those games that was made by Rare. And it's okay. I mean, it has a little bit of the exploration idea. A little bit. That's like a Dig Dug where you're going down there. It's a little bit more uncommon of an NES game. A little bit more obscure of an NES game. And it's fine, I guess. I mean, I'll give this game a C. Now, Double Dare, if you're not familiar with the game show, it asks these questions. Now, the fun of Double Dare are the physical challenges. It has you do different things to sometimes humiliate yourself or sometimes just get the target in the hole like this little one here, which I'm having a difficult time trying to get the how to do the speed, how to do the angle. 
<laughs> Didn't do too well this time around. But the lot of double there is it asks these questions, and if you don't know the answer, you can pass it off to your opponent. Now, if they get it right, then they get double the points. However, they might pass it back to you, and then you can use that strategy to get extra, extra points if you don't think they know the answer. Or more often than not, if you, I don't know the answer, you end up just doing, again, the physical challenge. And really, you never watched this game when I was on television to guess the answers to the questions. You watch this for the physical challenges. That was the best part. And in this NES game, it's kind of the best part of this game too. But it does have those questions to tide you over. It's it's a pretty fun game. I'd, I'd, I'd give this game a B. High Speed got some video pinball for your NES. Pretty cool sounding voice. Now this game has that split bottom so you always see your flippers. Now, me personally, I don't care for this. I'd rather it just not have that be a part of it. I mean, I understand why they did, I suppose, so you always kind of know, but it's, it confuses me even more when it's not there. Now, they have the scrolling element to give you, you know, the full distance of the table and all that, but, you know, I'm, I'd be okay if it just didn't. You know, or like other video pinball games where it goes, like, the screen changes to the upper screen to the lower screen. I'd be okay with that, too. For video pinball, I mean, it's also fine. I'll give it a C. Hollywood Squares. I loved me some Hollywood Squares when it was on television. Now, you do not have these celebrity squares. They are just random people in these uh, boxes here. I guess you can make up your own idea or, you know, <laughs> do whatever you want with them. In Hollywood Squares, they ask a question. They usually give some snide, kind of sarcastic answer as the joke answer, but then they actually answer it for real. And then you have to agree or disagree whether they gave you the right answer or not. And let's say if they get it wrong, then you get your mark on their board, which is kind of nice. Except for you can't win that way. You have to earn your own winning. Big fan of Hollywood Squares, although some of their retorts are a little messed up. I didn't catch any of them on this time around, but there have been some ones that are like, really, you actually got away with saying that? I don't know. I do, I do like Hollywood Squares. I come back to this one every once in a while. I'll get this game a B. Rare also did the Jeopardy games. Well, they did three of the four of them, and I'll assume all three as the same one, because they all play basically the same. There's Jeopardy, there's Jeopardy Jr., which has questions more towards uh, kids, geared towards kids, and there's also the Jeopardy 25th Anniversary Edition. It's more Jeopardy, just different questions and answers. Although with Jeopardy, it's always been kind of confusing, because it gives you the answer, and then that's why you have to form your response in the form of a question. I don't know. I think I still think it's a dumb idea, but all the same. They all play fine. It, it's Jeopardy. It's it's Jeopardy at the end of the day. It's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll give, give, give this game a C right in the middle. Jordan vs. Bird 1-on-1 -on -one came out thanks to our good friends at Rare. There's a few options to choose from, but never mind all that one-on-one -on -one nonsense. The only thing I played about this game was that slam dunk competition. I was a big fan of the slam dunk competition as part of this game. That's the only thing I really did. I did try to do the one-on-one -on -one and the three-point challenge and all that too, but yeah, the slam dunk competition, that's the best part. That's the best part of basketball. That's why you watch basketball. And the game's not great. I'll give this game a D, but yeah, there it is. Now, although NARC is a claim and from Williams, it was programmed for the NES by Rare, the arcade port. So that's pretty cool to know. NARC, when it came out, was mind-blowing. It was all about that Say No to Drugs movement. And you play this game by going around and you have to arrest all of these criminals. You just kind of hover over them and they, they abide and they get busted and then they're done. Or you can also shoot them in the face or blow them up with a rocket launcher and watch their limbs fly around. Now, I still like to play this game by trying to arrest them, but sometimes, yeah, it's just easier just to shoot them. <laughs> now, in Narc in the Arcade, it had several buttons, while on the NES, you only had two. So you have to kind of modify it, where it's like, you know, if you tap the button, it's the rocket launcher, but hold the button down, it's you shooting your gun. You know, things like that. It, it's a little bit to get used to, but it's not so bad. I still think Narc is pretty fun. I want to give this game a B. Yeah, we have an LJN game on this list from Rare. The first one here is Nightmare on Elm Street. This game is a lot of fun if you haven't played it. Oh, I think it's great. It's a little confusing because it doesn't really tell you where to go. You have your sidewalk here and you have to go in these houses, but you have to go in them in order, only it doesn't tell you what that order is. And while you're in these houses, you have to collect these bones because, of, of course, why not? And you have this meter that keeps ticking down, ticking down. The problem is once the meter goes down, then now you're in nightmare land kind of thing. Now you're in the nightmare dream. The good news about when you're dreaming is you can be whatever you want. So that's when you pick up these items that say, hey, I'm a ninja. Hey, I'm a, 
you know, I'm a, a gymnast. He can throw javelins and stuff like that. So it's actually going to help you defeat some of these enemies. And you can also wake back up too. That's nothing wrong with that. Got some Freddy Krueger kind of style bosses in this game too. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of this game. I'm going to give this game an A. More video pinball in the name of Pinbot. Pinbot was one of the more popular pinball games of its time. And like the other one, it has that split screen where it always shows you your paddles, but then it kind of scrolls up and down to show you the rest of the playing field. Which again, I don't care for, but I do like Pinbot and it's fine. I'll give this game a C. Did you know John Elway's quarterback was produced by Rare? Yeah. So Rare did this version of John Elway's quarterback, and well, I mean, there are better football games on the NES. Uh, let me just say this. There's a lot better football games on the NES. <laughs> it was one that most played because, hey, it has John Elway on the cover. Well, I know John Elway. Perfect. Has the endorsement on there. And then we get this. All right. Uh, this game gets a D. RC Pro Am, one of the original NES games. I love this game. Played a ton of it. Plays these little radio controlled cards, zooming around corners, drifting around corners if you can. That's right. You can pick up little items along the way too. Always nice to have missiles. Yeah, this is kind of like the original Mario Kart when you think about it. RC Pro Am, can't say enough good things about it. It was a game that if you grew up during the time you, you had it or you had a friend who had it, you know, played it a bunch when you could. Super fun game. Giving this game an A. And then RC Pro Am 2 came out later in the NES release. Yeah, like literally five years later. And this game, more of the same, except this one has like hills you can jump up, you know, the graphics look a little bit better. You have these little zoom arrows and stuff like that too. So much fun happening with RC Pro Am 2. I only wish it would have come out sooner. Like if the original RC Pro Am came out 87, 88, you know, this game should have come out like 1989. It would have been huge. But alas, here we go. And still a great game. I'm still giving this game an A as well. Taking it all the way back to one of the original black box titles, you have Slalom. Slalom being the skiing where you have to like go through the poles and all that. I remember playing this, but I just played it for the sake of playing it because it was there. It wasn't great, but it certainly wasn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Again, it's a fine game. I'll give this game a C. Played me a whole bunch of Snake, Rattle, and Roll when it first came out. It was one of the few games that I just bought when it came out. I didn't even rent it first because I knew I was going to love it. And I'm glad I did because I did love it. Isometric played the snake. He had to eat the little uh, the balls here. <laughs> and once you reach a certain weight, then you can go through the door to move on to the next stage. I just loved how it had these crazy enemies, these wacky enemies. Had a very kind of, you know, it's called Snake, Rattle, and Roll, so it makes sense to have a kind of Shake, Rattle, and Roll 1950s rock and roll vibe to the music. I love the fact that it just has that rare touch. Like, if you didn't t you didn't need to tell me that it was by rare, you can just tell by the way, you know, the, the lights kind of sparkle and stuff like that. It just has that look. Lots of unique different stages, a little difficult to control sometimes, so definitely watch out for that. I do like this game. I'm going to give this game a B. Solar Jetman's a game I've talked about a few times on this channel. You go from planet to planet and you have to pick up these parts for your ship or you know, get the things you need to move on to the next stage. Love the animation in this game. I have to give this game props every single time I talk about this because unlike games that come out today, you're talking about games like Halo, you're talking about games like No Man's Sky. This game actually took into consideration when you're on different planets there's different gravity. You know, if you figure the first planet's kind of standard, other planets have, you know, really loosey-goosey gravity. Some planets have strong gravity, and you have to associate that with the momentum of your ship and how you're flying and everything. I love that about this game. It also provides the extra challenge that you're not asking for, but it is one of those things where it's like, man, I gotta give it props because that's an amazing thing. It just looks cool, just sounds cool. I like this game, I'll give it a B. Super Glove Ball from Mattel was developed by Rare for the Power Glove. You do not need a Power Glove to play this game. You can play it with your D-pad just fine, it's fine. It plays a little bit like a, I don't know if it's like a like a first person ar like Arkanoid, but you have to hit all the tiles on all sides of the walls. You can pick up the ball and throw it again and stuff like that. Again, it was made for the Power Glove, but you do not need a Power Glove to play this game. And I'll give it a C because it's just right down the middle. Again, like Slalom, it's not great, but it's not bad. Well, here's Taboo, The Sixth Sense. It's one of the non-video game NES games, and there's only a couple of them. And it's things like you type in your name, you ask it a question, and then it starts doing like a tarot reading for you. So if you, instead of going to like, you know, the tarot reader or whatever, mind reader, whatever they call it, you know, the, the palm reader and stuff like that. Yeah, you can just come here and uh, play Taboo, The Sixth Sense for your NES and have a fun time doing it. Have fun doing it? I don't know. I don't even know if that's the right terminology. I mean, if I was going to give it any grade, I guess I'd have to give it a C because, again, it's just 
what how do you rate this game you just you don't you can't it's just it's not even a video game do you have time to talk about our time lord and savior I know I've used that joke in the past, and I'll do it again. This is one of my guilty pleasure games for sure. I remember buying this game just because it was like 15 bucks at KB Toys and Hobby on clearance. And I'm so glad I did. Every stage has five orbs. Once you collect them all, you kind of Scott Bakula into a different time area. This first one that you warp to is kind of like, you know, medieval times. And the orbs are collected in a different way, and they're not always in the same place on every stage. There's usually in, a, in one or two places, you know. You collect the four orbs anyway, the fifth orb is always going to be held by the boss. And you move on to the next stage and find out what's going to come up next. You might have different weapons in each stage too. I do love me some Time Lord. My nostalgia wants to give it an S, but realistically this game's a B. You heard of Wheel of Fortune? Well, it's another game show that came out for the NES. Again, like Jeopardy, they did three versions of Wheel of Fortune, and they all play pretty much the same. You just have to guess the answer on the board when it comes up. Everyone else is way better at predicting the answers than I am with this game. I've never been good at... <laughs> I've never been as good as many others anyway, as far as like, ooh, you know, this is what that word says, or this is the phrase and all that. I was like, how do you do that? I'm amazed every time. Like Jeopardy, give it a C right down the middle. Fun to check out and play every once in a while. Got Who Framed Roger Rabbit. This is another LJN game from Rare. And I really did like this game. I actually played this game quite a bit. I loved the overworld exploration. I loved you can go inside these buildings and stuff. Yeah, they all kind of look the same. Um, you can talk to these people and maybe they'll give you a clue. Like, hey, there's an item here. There's a whole lot of items to pick up in this game too. I liked just walking around. I liked just exploring. That was the fun part for me anyway. There's a lot of fun we had with this game. I think it's worth checking out. I personally would give this game a B. Wizards and Warriors, another one of those common games from the era of, man, if you, I mean, if you have an NES, you're probably playing this game, or your friend has it, maybe you rented it. Unlimited continues, so you can beat this game the first time you play it if you want to play it long enough to go all the way through it. Of course, again, this is back in the days when there was no passwords. There was no save states. <laughs> there was no saving your game at the end of the level. If you want to beat this game, you're playing it all the way through, buddy. Uh, I liked it, though. I liked it. You had to collect enough gems to open, basically, the door or to get past whatever you need uh, to get to the boss, to defeat the boss and move on to the next stage. And then when you defeat the boss, then you uh, save your, the, the damsel in distress or whatever and move on to the next stage. There you go. Nice big levels. I like this game a lot. I'm giving this game an A. And then Iron Sword came out. This is Wizards and Warriors 2. Again, with that rare animation. Just that, I love the animation that rare games have. They really went out of their way to just provide cool stuff. Cool music in this game too. Love the look of it. This, to me, felt like a proper sequel to Wizards and Warriors. I could have seen, so sometimes like, oh, here's this game and then here's the sequel to it. And you're like, eh, it's kind of different. Um, this one had enough new things, but still kind of kept it the same a little bit. Where it's like, awesome, yeah, more Wizards and Warriors, I'm cool with this. And it was just kind of cool just to explore and look around. It did have the added element of you needed to collect enough magic to defeat the boss. That was super annoying. But still, a great game. And I would also give this game an A. When ranking these games among themselves, for sure. We come to Wizards and Warriors 3. This one's a little bit more obscure. This one came out a little bit later, 91 now. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to this one. It just didn't look the same. It didn't feel the same. Like as if the first two was done by a certain team at Rare and then those guys moved on or something and then it's, it's still by Rare, but not the original people who made it. I don't know. I mean, it looks okay, I guess, but it's like, it just doesn't, I don't know. You know what I mean? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm giving this game a C. It's just, it, it just feels uninspired. And I know there's a lot of people who like this game, and that's got to be fine, but man, I just, I just can't get into it. Rare made a couple of WWF games at the time, including WWF WrestleMania. Got six wrestlers to choose from, and it's not as much wrestling as it is just kind of like uh, fighting. You, you can punch and kick and jump and headbutt and stuff like that. You know, not everyone can body slam, not everyone can dive off the top rope. And especially if you grew up with the NES and you were a wrestling fan like I was, you always kind of told yourself, you know what, the people who make these games aren't even wrestling fans. Like the people who make these games don't know anything about wrestling. So they just kind of make up something. And it's like, ah, that's good enough. I mean, not just things like Hulk Hogan's wearing red instead of yellow, but things like Hulk Hogan can jump off the top rope, which Hulk Hogan never leaves his feet. You know, stuff like that. We played this because it was there. We played this because it was WWF. We didn't play it because we liked it. We played it because it was there. This game gets a D. 
Later on, we got WrestleMania Challenge. And this one actually wasn't a bad game. This was actually pretty good. You could at least do a couple of maneuvers in this one at least. You know, like body slams and backdrops and atomic drops and uh, the characters usually have some sort of their finishing move. I mean, of course, back wrestling back then and even now, I guess, to an extent, it's all about that finishing move, right? It's cool they had wrestlers like Rick Rude, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Brutus Beefcake and stuff like that too. Still could have been a lot better, but you know what? It's be definitely better than WrestleMania, giving this game a C. And I've done videos on just about every publisher there is out there for the NES, so but what other developers should we rank? Let me know in the comments.